Uh, time for housekeeping. Do it. Let's keep the house. I decided not to say it this time. I noticed. I couldn't tell if it was because you couldn't remember it. Oh no, I just chose not to. Amanda tweeted us. So I think Amanda had like two episodes that she caught up on to tweet us about. I mean, we were releasing them very sporadically, so I'm not surprised that people missed some of them or... So this first couple of tweets would be about two episodes ago. Okay. So first tweet, she said, I had not heard of this Spider-Man game until your podcast. I basically only hear about video games from podcasts or my nephews. So if six to ten year olds aren't playing it obsessively, I'm clueless. Which got me kind of... I started tweeting this to to Amanda, but I also wanted to talk to you about it on the podcast. Do you think like six to ten years old is an appropriate age for the Spider-Man game. Yeah. Because there is, like... I, I couldn't remember how much swearing there was in it. Or if there was anything in it that, like... Obviously, it's comic booky, but I... Could, I don't like, think so. I, I honestly couldn't remember if there was swearing or anything. I don't know what age rating it got, to be fair. Uh... Is it in one of those? Oh, it's just, to be fair, it's a 16. Yeah, so that, that's what I'm thinking then. Was, I, so maybe not. Yeah, so there was, was swearing. Obviously, the, the story gets quite heavy, but I don't know if like a kid would necessarily like be bothered by that. Yeah, I guess so. I guess some of it is kind of dark. I don't know. Yeah. I think, um, you know, as with all things like this, if you're a Oh, it depends adult, on the kid, don't it, right? Yeah, exactly. Make a judgment. Play it yourself and make yeah. a judgment. I know Amanda's not asking whether she should play it or not. I'm just no, I, it was, just a, it, it was something that we never discussed on the show itself. Um, yeah. when we discussed the, the video game but I was curious for your thoughts yeah no, that's fair uh, Amanda said oh god the whole work retreat debacle sounded awful hilarious but awful when Liam said all work and no play make Liam a dull boy I cracked up I'm sorry for laughing at your pain at least everyone remembered the wax bit instead of that <laughs> I also have feedback for you on uh, that episode uh, my sister last night, because she came back from uni for the weekend, yeah. was talking to me and she was like, oh, well, she, she was doing some work in like a work room or something. And yeah. she was like, oh, I need, I'll put something on while I'm doing it. So she chose our podcast because obviously she listens. Yeah. Uh, and she said that she had to sit the entire time trying not to laugh hearing that story, and <laughs> which made me burst into laughter in the living room, remembering the story because <laughs> it's so, so horrible <laughs> and yet so funny. <laughs> Honestly, oh. I I haven't gone back to the office since that. I can't wait for you to go in. I hope I you have come to... in and they just slow clap and they're like, "Wax man's back." I have to go in on Tuesday, and I'm kind of dreading it. I honestly hope that someone mentions it. Oh. I want I want it to be a day where no one says anything about it. Everything seems fine, and then like as you're leaving, someone you don't know is like, "Oh, you're the guy with the wax." Yeah, the thing is, like, we've got a Christmas do coming up in like early December. That's gonna be fun because mm. they're definitely gonna bring it up then. Yeah, you're you're using fun in the wrong way. <laughs> fun for everyone else. Yeah, uh, and I, your, you mentioned your sister said I didn't put the picture up, which is my bad. Yes, and I I still need to do that. Cool. I'll get around to it. Jesus. Um, Amanda said. Ellie, you were robbed of a true midnight snack in Portugal. Also, I saw some of the pictures on Instagram and it looked lovely. It was it was lovely. And yes, we were robbed of a midnight snack. For the listeners who weren't listening to that episode, they had a midnight snack that started at 10.30 and finished at 11.30. So not, not a midnight. fucking midnight snack. Uh, Amanda also said, I knew the Disney box set revelation was coming, but Ellie's response was priceless. On the edge of the Criterion sale, I'm not sure if Liam will do it this year or not, but I'll keep the hope alive. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, because moving is expensive. Yeah. But November is a long month, and we're only 11 days in. Is that I... how long the sale... Does the sale last for the whole of November? Yeah. Oh, God. That, it, you, this is like... The, is, someone needs to just tie you down for the whole month. I, I, I know there's at least one I definitely want to get, which is Silence of the Lambs, because obviously... But I've also got my eye on like another three. Jesus Christ. And that that to me is being good. Normally I'll go crazy yeah, yeah. and I'll get like Usually 20. Usually it's a lot worse. But you know, let's just not even talk about any of that. Has the uh, Have the Disney DVDs arrived yet? No. Oh, okay. No, it hasn't. But Fair enough. with the whole move, right, in the last like two weeks, I've watched maybe two DVDs and they were two that... Uh, arrived just before we moved right so the number isn't really going down 
No, that's fair. We'll get to it. We'll get to it, Liam. Yeah. Uh, Amanda also tweeted uh, saying, I don't remember this in the episode, so you might have to help me here. Uh, she said she cracked up at the idea that people will learn Liam is a self-described Lothario and therefore know he doesn't hate women. And then she tweeted a gif that just says, that's not how any of this works. Yeah. On it. What was I that mean, about? I think, yeah, you, one of your things was you were talking about, I th- you were talking about how you were a Lothario as a child. Oh, okay. And then I think you uh, somehow tied it into how can you be, how can you hate women because you were a bit of a Lothario. And Amanda's right, that is not how it works. Uh, Amanda also said that she thinks we might need a new section on the show called Adventures in Waxing. <laughs> now, I mean... Go on. No, I, I, I don't think it's a terrible idea, but... The thing is, I love the feeling after I've just been waxed, but my skin is responding horribly to it. So it's making me nervous. Like After my last wax, which was three weeks ago, and you, like, I've been advised to go every four weeks, Yeah, my skin has only just calmed down. So three weeks after the last one. Right. And I'm kind of like, do I want to you know, have one week of giving it a break and then put it through this trauma again? Or should I let it have more of a recovery well, time? Do you, have you told the people that you're getting waxed by? Yeah. Do you say to them, look, I'm, I ha- last time I got waxed, I had a really bad reaction. Yeah. Three Either weeks, I say it or we... I make Kat tell them. Well, yes. Maybe you should say it because they probably yeah. don't listen. Because that doesn't sound like it's real. If if your girlfriend is going, he has got a, <laughs> has a bad reaction to waxing. Yeah. They're probably I mean, like... Yeah, they can see on my back. Um, but this time as well, like I just got like lots of spots afterwards and I was doing the whole like what is it called the scrub that you're meant to do afterwards what's that called it's got a word for yeah it. I know what you mean uh, it's not moisturising no like cleansing whatever something yeah yeah but that's not helping okay so I don't know I might I might go six weeks and give it a little just yeah. to let my skin chill we've also got to find a new place now that we've moved so that's going to be oh, a whole nightmare. fun adventure just get cat to wax you no um this I liked. I always like getting tweets like this. So if anyone's listening, these are the sort of tweets that I love to, to to read. Amanda said, totally agree with Liam's first man assessment. It has a real disconnect throughout. Apollo 13 is a much more engaging film. Now I want to see a movie about someone bringing jazz to the moon. So it wasn't, you know, just me. And Amanda also said that she would love to hear more true crime recommendations from Ellie. Uh, Amanda's just subscribed to Happy Face based on your recommendation. And Amanda also loved it when Ellie went into film analysis mode. Uh, well, if Amanda wants uh, true crime recommendations, yep. did find another podcast called Dr. Death, yep. which is more horrifying than Happy Face, but very interesting. So you heard it here first. Dr. Death. Very Dr. good. Death. I don't remember you going into film analysis mode. Uh, I don't remember what I did it on. Oh, I did Brain Dead. Was it when you were talking about the the mum and stuff oh right at the end where we were like there's not much to do and then you forced us into it and then i just sort of went really like oh well i guess it's this yeah yeah so maybe okay maybe you need to oh, we'll do that more <laughs> we'll have a little segment at the end where i just where it's uh, ellie moodily does film analysis yeah. ellie puts on a her film hat oh great Here's well i guess this one's probably about this <laughs> um have you done any of the other like culture swap things like i know the spider-man game got dlc have you done any of that? Uh, I've been playing, been playing Red Dead, so no. I need to spend more time with that game. It, I've you just do. the move happened at the worst time for that game coming Indeed. out, and now Spyro's I, honestly, out just, on Tuesday. Just to catch you up on on how I am with Red Dead, I have discovered I have an addiction right to in-game dominoes. Yeah, which is weird because you don't like it when I get addicted to in-game games. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, mine's better than your Gwent addiction, where you had to go and collect every card. Like Red Dead Redemption dominoes, you don't collect tiles. To well, maybe put in that's your collection. where it's going wrong. <laughs> that's not how dominoes works. <laughs> It'd be cool but if it did. I genuinely like. At the end of the day, if I'm playing Red Dead Two and I'm like, I haven't got enough time to really go do another mission, but I, you know, I'm not quite ready to go to bed. I will have a game of dominoes in camp, and it's the most ridiculous thing. I also played blackjack for too long because I was trying to complete one of the challenges, which is. Listeners, if you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2, back me up. Gambler Challenge 2 is bullshit. Okay. I, I really need to just spend some time to get like, as into the game as you are. 
It's really fun. I, I, I love it. But Do you know, I, the, one of the things I'm struggling time. with that you might be able to help me with is the the gun control. I find it a bit too floaty, and I don't know if there's like a no. It, it's yeah, it is floaty. I use yeah. the uh, the quick aim thing that's always been a thing in games. Yeah, so you I aim down I your sights on. and then just go let go and aim again, let go yeah. and aim. Yeah, yeah, I have that on, and like you, you can do that, and then like if you if you move the thing up a little bit to get headshots, yeah. that sort Flick of thing. Up to that's, get the that's what yeah. I've been doing, but. Even doing that, is that I and still... then use your dead eye because yeah, I was talking yeah. to a, the guy at work that's also playing, and he he's new to PS4. He was one of the guys that got spi- got a PS4 for right. Spider Man. Yeah, so he's like totally he's in that that weird position where you're like an avid gamer who has always played on PC. So yeah. suddenly you're having to learn a controller. Yeah. And I get it. It must be so frustrating for him because he he talks about like he's like it's so annoying because I know that if I had a keyboard and mouse, I'd be fucking great here. Yeah, but I sit there and I'm like. What button do they want me to press? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I remember doing that. Yeah, the thing is, Spyro's out on Tuesday, and I've got yeah. it pre-ordered, and I'm hoping that when I get in from work on Tuesday, it's going to be here ready for me, and I'm going to have to play it. Like, right. So Red Dead's going to have to take a little pause. I, I don't, I don't foresee Spyro being a particularly lengthy game Isn't experience. It, which games is it? Is it? It's the first three. Yeah. Dude, that's gonna be a, that's long. Is it gonna be as long as Crash Bandicoot though? For for me, who was trying to platinum it, because I don't I think, think it's hard. It won't be as hard, but it'll be longer. Uh. There was definitely always more content in Spyro than there was in Crash. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I think you're fully underestimating those games. Yeah, probably. I I have very very vague memories of them. Fair enough. We will see. Yeah. Um, Liam's never going to play Red Dead Two ever again. I think I I haven't found it's hooked me yet. Yeah, because you, uh, listeners, Liam's so annoying with this game. He's been in the tutorial mission till honestly, we got a message. Well, when was it? Like, Two days a couple ago. Of days ago. Yeah. Suddenly get a message, Liam going, "I'm finally out of the tutorial area." This is this is after weeks of this game being out. About two <laughs> weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Liam. You're saying that like that's not a big amount of time to still be doing the tutorial. No, but like missions. I said, with a move in between, like I, it's it's not even. The amount of time I've actually had to play this game has probably been about four hours. That's still too long to be doing the tutorials. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was housekeeping. Uh, well, let's just do... You already brought it up, so let's get on to Liam's DVD tally. Uh, where were we at last time? Last time, Liam, you were on 1,067. Okay. What are you on now? It has... It has I mean, it shouldn't down. have changed. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's fine. It's 1,068. Sorry? You said it's gone down? No, I said it hasn't gone down. Oh. How's it gone up? You were moving. I don't remember. You were, how, what do you mean you don't remember? I you don't black remember out and buy a DVD. I, 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 I've, like, I've stopped buying temporarily. I don't know. <laughs> how has it gone up? I don't know. I don't know. I, I watched the two films that I remember buying. But... Did, have I brought a film that I haven't really remembered? Oh, no, okay, sorry. I figured it out, I figured it out. It, it's at 1,067. Okay. I forgot to take one of the films I'd watched off the list. Okay, good. So you're at the same? Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah, I forgot to t- take... Um, so, for, for the listeners listening, um, I don't really... For listeners listening, didn't have to... Explain that, did I? Anyway, as opposed to on. the listeners that are reading along, exactly. Maybe one day we'll we'll be so popular that people will be transcribing this. If that's the case, hello, transcriber. I hope you're being paid handsomely. Anyway, they aren't. Not if we've um, anything to do with it. No. I got annoyed because there were two films I really wanted to see. One of them just wasn't having any news about a UK release date, and the okay. other one is getting a limited theatrical release date in December, I believe. And I didn't want to wait, so I ordered the Blu-rays from America and they arrived, like, end of October. Okay. So that was for 8th grade, which I know Amanda's going to want to hear my thoughts on this, so I'm just going to give, like, not even a review, but just basically... You know how we've discussed in the past that I struggle with female-led coming-of-age films? Yep, yeah, sure, sexist. This is a female-led coming-of-age film and is best one I've seen out of the recent like few that I've been struggling with okay I think you should watch it okay eighth grade eighth grade yeah it's the one that's directed by Bay Burnham oh okay yeah yeah I, I figured I, you... did, I wanted to see that yeah. yeah 
Uh, and the other film was a film called uh, Sorry to Bother You. Don't think I've heard of it. Um, I struggled with it. We watched it on Cat's Birthday and we stopped watching it after an hour because none of us was really enjoying it. And then I finished right. it the next day. And it's the sort of film that, to me, it feels like it's trying really, really, really hard to make a point. I just don't really know okay. what the point is that it's trying to make. Right, that's not good if it is trying to make a point. If you didn't get the point, that means they sort of yeah. failed. Yeah, so yeah, I really struggled with that. Um, but yeah, I just forgot to remove one of those off my list after I watched it. Fair enough. That was housekeeping. Hooray!